Thank you so much, Abraham, for calling upon me. Uh, I've always wanted to come to a Terrytown one, so this is a thrill to be here. Uh, one of the things that I would like to speak about today is I would like a little help in refining. I have, ever since I was a little girl, I have been telepathically communicating with the living and with the dead. And I had an, an incident last year that I would like a little clarity on. Um, a friend of mine who I hadn't seen in years and years suddenly popped into my mind and there was this in, intensive just talking back and forth and it was going along okay I mean there were some things it was like should I, I I don't know I had I guess that's part of what I attracted what I didn't want with this but to make a long story short I went to bed one night and I laid down and all of a sudden I felt this person from the non-physical laying down next to me it was like this visceral touch feeling thing and it, it wasn't him I don't think it was something I attracted maybe from splits in my energy but I know that there is no you've spoke about it many times there is no such thing as souls being trapped but what is it that actually looks like a person and feels like a person and you feel a touch and I guess that's not really what I want I want to continue on with with this type of communication, but that's not really exactly what I want to manifest. So, Well, the most important thing to realize is that, and we liked the way you stepped into this, when you say, I can communicate in terms of thought with those who are still physically focused and those who are not. And what we want to say to clarify that is, so you can receive a thought vibration and you can translate it into a word equivalent. In other words, thoughts aren't words. Thoughts are meaning or knowing that you can match words up to. Okay. So every thought that has ever been thought still exists because thoughts are the beginning of all creations. In other words, thoughts are things, just like things are things, or just like people are things. Thoughts, in other words, here's a fun way to approach this. You think a thought, and then the thought thinks. Mm -hmm. Because whatever it is, is vibrating, and law of attraction is then responding to it. So, we're sort of giving you a little basis here. So, okay. when you realize that you can translate thoughts that's like saying and it's not very different from saying Abraham I can read books and we would say oh then you can read books about things that please you and you can read books about things that don't please you and you would not say no I only have the ability to read the books about certain subjects mm -hmm. I read books I translate energy so then, now you answered this part yourself. Once you understand that you can translate energy, then the next question is, but why do things come to me as they do? Why would I receive a certain thing? And you answered this yourself by saying, I guess I attracted it. And we say, mm -hmm. of course you did. In other words, mm -hmm. nothing ever comes into your experience that you are not a vibrational match to. Esther had her first real understanding with this at the time that Nicole Brown Simpson was murdered because Esther was getting on an airplane once or twice a week with Jerry coming out to see those like you and one early morning flight she leaned back in her chair she was going to take a nap and she heard a voice very clearly in her head say Esther can you hear me and it startled her because she translated the voice very clearly and yet she had not been translating voices before she was accustomed to hearing us but this was something different and she could tell that it was she said yes I can hear you and the voice said, I am Nicole. Will you help me? And Esther said, probably not. Mm -hmm. She could just feel mm -hmm. that there was something mm -hmm. about this that she did not want to get involved in. She said, but I will hear you out and I will write it down. So Esther took her notebook and began writing as quickly as she could write. And the more she wrote, the more uncomfortable she became. And finally, she said to Jerry, you're not going to believe this. Look at this. And once she sort of settled down from all of this, and they had landed, and Jerry had had an opportunity to talk with her, and, and he asked for Abraham to come and explain what was going on, we said... 
Look what Esther has been reading. Esther had been captivated by this murder. She had been tuning into the television programs. She had the magazines all around her on the airplane. In other words, she had activated within herself the vibration about this. And then Esther said, so did I receive something accurate? Her Esther was upset with us. She said, Abraham, you said when people die, they become pure positive energy. And this was not pure positive energy. So what's going on? And we said, you did not receive this woman as she now is in her non-physical form. You received the thought form of her that was left as the residual of that which is swirling around her physical form. And even more, you cannot get an accurate reading on her vibration only because there were millions of people around the planet speculating and this had created a thought form that was very active that what Esther was reading had caused her to tap into. So mm-hmm. Esther said, you mean I can't even really know what happened? And we said, no, but you can know what the majority of people think happened. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're getting the point. Right. We want you to understand that every thought that's ever been thought still exists and that by law of attraction, just as you come together in your physical format by law of attraction, thoughts come together. So there are streams or currents. And we want you to be easy about all of this because this stream of who you really are is so dominant that if you reach just a little bit in the direction of what feels good, you'll become a vibrational match to who you really are. But it is possible for you to pick up, especially if someone who is physically focused, someone maybe still remaining, is focused Mm -hmm. sometimes on the anniversary of such and such, or a group of people will get together. You can activate something. But humans rarely activate their dearly departed from the vantage point that they now are. They always activate them from how they last remembered them, usually, you see. Even physically focused people? You're right, because if I hadn't seen them in a while, right. That, that's okay. what we mean. Yeah, okay. People usually... And so we would not spend too much time turning our attention toward translating vibration. St- because when you think about it, when you think about all of the possible things around this world that you could think about, things that are of a physical nature, and then think about all of the thoughts that you could think about, all of the people who have lived all of the lives who have come before. In other words, if you are sensitive to energy and you go to a battlefield, you have all kinds of experiences, don't you? If you are sensitive and you go to a historical place, you have all kinds of things. In other words, you can pick up on the vibration, but but the thing that's interesting, as you visit these places, you can't pick up on the authentic vibration of what happened then, because you've got all of the vibrations of all of the people who have visited even recently, who are at in their two cents worth to what they think happened. In other words, history is still in the making in every single case, you see. And so what we are getting at here is that since you are sensitive to energy, and all of you are, whether you know that you are or not, we would spend our time making the decision that we are looking for thoughts, no matter what the subject, that are downstream in vibrational alignment with source energy thoughts. And as you do that, you'll tap into the true essence of who these individuals are, and then what they have to offer you is always really meaningful, you see. When you come into alignment with one of your dearly departed, and you are a vibrational match to who they now are, it is a life-giving experience. It is an experience of clarity, you see. There's no confusion. It's only pure positive energy, because that's who every one of them are now that they have reemerged back into the non-physical. Okay. Helpful? Yes. So that feeling of touch, though, that was probably something that was... Well, what it is, you're just a really good translator of the vibration. As Esther is receiving us here, she is translating us at unconscious levels into the physical word equivalent. There are those who can see in that way. In other words, there are people who have what you call visions. Because as they download the block of thought, it displays for them visually. Mm -hmm. That's what your dreams are also. In other words, it's a visual. And so sometimes you can translate through all of your physical senses... Sometimes you can smell something that isn't in the room that's a vibrational. Years ago, as Jerry and Esther first began, they visited a lovely family in San Diego, and there were three generations of them in this living room, and they were talking, father and mother and grandfather, and they were talking 
grandchildren, and they were talking about their parents of parents of parents who were no longer physically focused. And as they were visiting, the everyone in the room, including Jerry and Esther, who did not know these people, smelled a very vivid... Now, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and they're having this chat, and they're out in the middle of nowhere, and they smelled maple syrup and bacon being cooked. Mm. And everyone there began to laugh, because that was the thing this family always did. It got together one morning a week and they had that breakfast, you see. And so as they are lovingly coming together and chatting about these dearly departed, that was the vibration that most vividly was translated by all of them enough that Jerry and Esther even got a whiff of it, you see. And so okay. we, we give this to you by means of saying to you that this stuff that you call your reality is not the reality that you think it is. Everything that you see as this knock-on-wood stuff is your vibrational interpretation. You see because you interpret vibration. You hear because you interpret vibration. You smell and taste and touch because you interpret vibration. You're just so good at it, you don't know you're doing it. So when you take it a little further and you are translating vibration of things that you can't really see, in other words, it's an interesting thing because as physical beings you get together and you say, well, we all agree for the most part that we can see this and we can feel it and we are so good at interpreting it that we would all describe it in a similar way. In other words, it looks pretty much the same to all of us. <laughs> And what we're wanting you to understand is that there are those of you who... Do any of you see energy? You seeing any energy around here? Mm -hmm. We'll goose it up a little bit so you'll really get a look at it. Mm. <laughs> seeing anything? Oh, yeah. <laughs> are all of you seeing it? What's wrong with you? <laughs> So what you understand is that you are at different places of interpreting different things. And when you stop arguing about what's really there, and you just understand that you have the ability to interpret, and you have different reasons for wanting to interpret in the way that you do, then you just relax. And then you ask the only question that matters, whether you are dealing with things of a physical nature, or of a non-physical nature, whether it's that which you think is source, whether it's that you think which is a dearly departed, you ask yourself the only question that matters, does this feel good? Does it feel good? Does it, does it feel as good as where I was? And as you let that be your criteria, then you'll always be guided toward that which is the most beneficial for you. There is not anything for you to worry about at all. When Esther first began interpreting this, us in this way, many well-meaning people came to her and said, you have to find a way of protecting yourself because there are all kinds of things out there that you don't want to dabble in. And Esther said... Abraham, what do you think about this? And we said, why would you ask us? We're, we're what they're worried about. <laughs> and there's no way that Esther and Jerry could ever prove who Abraham is. We didn't come with any credentials. There's no way they can track our vibrational stream. There's, there's no way. Jerry's tried. <laughs> we won't we will not admit that we come from any planet we will not own any particular galaxy in other words we are that which we are and so Jerry and Esther have had only one resource in order to understand whether they want to play with us or not and that is how do we feel to them as they play and as okay. you let that be your criteria, then your guidance will always lead you in the direction of that which is source and in the direction of that which is beneficial to you. Okay, great. Thank you. And in closing, I guess I can just say you always say that you only have one answer, and I guess the answer is just point the boat downstream and that's it. Well, that's the new interpretation yeah. of it, isn't it? Yes. In other words, life is good. It always will be. It always has been. You are blessed beings. Life is supposed to be well for you. You are supposed to thrive. And when you're not, you have the option of doing something about that. And that is true empowerment. And that is the only place that freedom ever exists. Yes, when you, you understand that, you have it all. Yes. And now you just live happily ever after. Yes. Thank yes. you so much, Abraham. Yes, indeed.